Market Risk Premium In theory, the market risk premium is the additional return above the risk-free rate that investors require for bearing the risk of the market portfolio. Surveys have found a wide range of estimates for the market risk premium. Bruner, Eads, Harris, and Higgins found that most corporations use risk premiums between 4% and 6%, although 50% of analysts use estimates between 7% and 7.4%.37 Graham and Harvey reported that the market risk premium used by U.S. CFOs between June 2000 and November 2006 ranged from 2.39%, November 2005, to 4.65%, September 2000. 38 The average of 3.47% is notably lower than Bruner et al.s earlier findings. Fernandez and Del Campo found that the average market risk premium used by analysts in the United States and Canada in 2010 was 5.1% and ranged from 2.9% to 10%.39 The corresponding figures for corporations were 5.3% and 1.9% to 11.2%. Textbooks tend to use the historical average risk premium over T-bills which is usually between 8% and 8.5%. During the most recent financial crisis, managers have become particularly concerned about how increases in risk aversion may affect the cost and availability of capital. Dobbs, Jong, and Collar found that economic conditions have little influence on the cost of equity.40 for example, a 20% drop in share price and a 7.5% decline in profits would amount to a 0.6% change in the cost of equity, Table 8.1. They also pointed out that stock price changes are affected more by the revision of earnings estimates than by changes in the cost of capital. The Cost of Debt the cost of debt is relatively easier to estimate than the cost of equity since market yields on bonds are directly observable. 52% of firms tend to use their marginal cost when calculating the pre-tax cost of debt.41 For new bond issues, firms observe the yield to maturity on bonds with equivalent credit ratings. 32% of firms use Table 8.1 Percentage change in cost of equity given changes in sales price and earnings A 7.5% decrease in earnings combined with a 20% decrease in price results in a 0.6% increase in the cost of equity. The weighted average of each of their outstanding bond issues, the method that most textbooks and financial advisors endorse. To adjust for the tax benefit of debt 52% of firms calculate their after-tax cost of debt using marginal or statutory tax rates. The majority of financial advisors and textbooks recommend using marginal tax rates. A minority of corporations and financial advisors use the historical average tax rate to estimate the cost of debt. Weights on debt and equity in estimating cost of capital the walk depends on the percentages of debt and equity in the capital structure. It is recommended that market values be used in estimating these percentages since book values on the balance sheet are historical and do not reflect current values. The market value of equity can be calculated by multiplying the closing price of a firm's stock by the number of shares outstanding. It is not generally easy to directly obtain the market value of debt. Although some bonds are traded, many firms have debt that is not traded. Although the firms themselves have access to their current loan balances, this information is often unavailable to the public. In this case, it becomes necessary to rely on the book value of the debt instead. Another issue is the choice between target and actual capital structure. Since debt and equity costs depend on the proportions of each source of financing in the capital structure, this suggests that the current, actual proportions of each should be used in computing the walk. However, if a firm's target weights are publicly known and investors anticipate the firm changing the weights, 
the observed costs of debt and equity may reflect the target capital structure. The weights for debt and equity are complicated when firms have off-balance sheet financing instruments. These are hidden debts, thus if they are not incorporated in estimating the walk, this estimate will not be accurate. The implications of off-balance sheet financing instruments will be discussed in a later section. Implications for Decision Makers The chosen risk-free proxy, market risk premium, or value of beta can result in dramatic differences in estimates of the walk, thus it is important to consider how the walk is to be used. If it is used to gauge past performance, one should use parameters that reflect past circumstances. In contrast, if it to be used for capital budgeting purposes, one should use parameters that reflect expectations for the future with the corresponding project's time horizon in mind. It is also imperative that the value of beta used in capital budgeting reflects the risk of the project, not the risk of the overall firm. Using the overall equity beta when a project has lower risk than the company as a whole will lead to an overestimate of the cost of equity and thus the rejection of a potentially profitable project and vice versa. If new debt is to be issued to fund a project, it is appropriate to use the yield to maturity on the new bond issues in computing the cost of debt. Finally, the weights used to compute the walk should reflect the expected capital structure weights.